Look, I couldn't bring a better guest to get you caliente and inspired at the same time. Today, we have the one, the one, the one, the one, and only David Meltzer. What's up, David? How are you? What a great introduction. Thank you so much. I appreciate it uh, being here to hopefully not only motivate, get people up, get them back up, get them started, get them back started, but to inspire them, to get them there. Let's get everybody there. And it is caliente. So muchas gracias. Ahí Todos estamos. El mundo. Ahí estamos, papi. <laughs> Hey, this is Jason Roselle, and welcome to Get Inspired, the official podcast and YouTube show that will empower your mind, body, business, social media branding, relationships, and anything that's holding you back from becoming the best version of you. Listen, before I became a TV personality, an author, a celebrity trainer, a life and wellness coach, and the founder of Caliente Fitness, I was broke obese for 20 plus years, full of stretch marks, full of excuses, and most importantly, here's the deal. I was unhappy. I was able to change my life completely, and since then, I've helped thousands do the same. This show is gonna bring you awesome guests, tons of helpful programs that'll aid you, but most importantly, your questions and topics that will make this show your show. My question is this. Are you ready to get inspired? Well, get ready, because the show starts now. David Meltzer is the co-founder of Sports One Marketing, a three-time international best-selling author, the host of the Entrepreneur's Playbook podcast, and is featured in many books, movies, and TV shows such as World's Greatest Mod Motivators, Think and Grow Rich, The Legacy, and Beyond the Secret, airing on Netflix. David, you freaking rock. What's up, brother? I am so just happy. I want to empower other people to be happy. That's why I do these interviews to try to give people the daily practices and the mindset, the heart set and the conscious continuum, the practices to get them there. Absolutely. Let me ask you, you know, I've been following you for a while and uh, I've interviewed some pretty inspiring people, but you take inspiration to a whole nother level level in life that hits home to me because I've been through so many struggles in life. Before you came, became who you are today, what are things you wish you would have known that would have saved you a lot of time, money, and stress in your life? Oh my goodness. Well, number one, I wish I would have known to ask for help. Uh, I have two words on my nightstand, two words on my screensaver. They are radical humility. You see, there's only two types of people in the world, ignorant people that don't know what they don't know, and ignorant people that don't know what they don't know. The difference between the two people is one are humble and they admit they don't know what they don't know and they ask for help. They find people that sit in the situation that they wanna be that, and they ask them for help. They get directions. The fastest way to get to where you wanna be is find someone that's already there and ask them for directions. The other side of it is the, is the one I lived in, which was ignorant arrogance, where you know you don't know what you don't know. You're overselling, backend selling, lying, manipulating, and cheating people, pretending as you're an expert that you know everything. Well, you don't know what you don't know. Ask for help. Find the fastest way to get to where you want to be. Be humble. Allow the universe to help you. Everybody's connected. Let's remember, remind, and recollect that unification of all the energy, gifts, and blessings we've been given. Don't take for granted what you've already been given. Don't take for granted what other people are wishing for, especially yourself. We're doing it every day. So that would be the, the one lesson when I was young, I wish I would have known is, man, if I would have asked for help, I still, I lost over a hundred million dollars. I'd still have all that money and 10 times as much if I just asked for help. Absolutely, man. Isn't it funny how the ego comes into play and we just, we just let it happen, right? Yeah. And it, it's, when, when would you say, at what age did you realize, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've read millions, well, not millions, thousands of books. Um, you know, when I read The Power of Now, that was very impactful for me, right? Um, when did you realize that you are a totally different entity than your brain? Yeah, I think Think and Grow Rich was, you know, it's an evolution, not a revolution for me. There's layers of understanding. So books like Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, Love Power it. of Intention. I thought you were going to say Power of Intention. Power <laughs> of Now is great. Power of Intention by Dr. Wayne Dyer. Started studying five and a half years ago. Well, we'll be six years in January. The Course in Miracles. 
uh, dealing with and understanding what I already am, happy, healthy, wealthy, and worthy, figuring out what I'm doing to interfere with it through ego, utilizing forgiveness as a superpower to forgive myself. Um, those are some of the books uh, that I read still every day. And I continue to read, you know, I met an interesting guy. I, I was an anti-Ferrari or exotic car person because I always felt like I don't want to buy things I don't need to impress people I don't like, uh, which I did in my 30s when I was a multimillionaire. Uh, but yet, you know, I have a friend that owns a Lamborghini and I ask him, dude, you don't seem like an arrogant type. You know, why, why do you need to show off? Why, you know, a, a Chevy Volt is good enough. You don't need yeah. the, the Lamborghini. He said, because when kids ask me, right, it's African-American, a black guy that I know. When kids ask me how I got that car, are you a rap star? Are you a quarterback? You know, what are you? He said, I read books and I teach. And uh, so you buy the, the right things for the right reasons. Man, money can buy you happiness. It's what you shop for and the reasons you shop for it. Totally, totally. So what did he respond? Obviously, besides that, I mean, at the end of the day, he works hard, right? Yeah. He got, he's got the Lambo, right? So how does he diffuse people? Like even, you know, like yourself, you questioned him. How does he diffuse people, I guess? I think, you know, being yourself, knowing what you are. See, it doesn't matter what I think, right? It doesn't matter what you do. You got to know your own values. You've got to want what you want and learn from it and move on. See, I owned a Ferrari. But I owned it for the wrong reasons. And I learned I owned it for the wrong reasons. So I drive a Chevy Volt. See, yeah. he bought a Lambo and it's giving him everything that he wants. There's some people that buy Lambos and Ferraris just to make money. Uh, right. And I'm fine with that. So it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. You got to understand your own values, your own practices, your own timing, your own risk tolerance, who you are. You find your frequency. The people that are on your frequency will find you. Amen to that. Amen to that. I mean, one thing that I got, I, there's a lot of things that I love about what you do. You cover so many a aspects in life, business, careers, even self-esteem, right? I've, I've listened to a lot of your podcast episodes. Uh, by the way, guys, I know all of his information is going to be on here for David, but really get glued and get tuned in weekly. This man puts out some amazing episodes that get your caliente hair sticking up. Okay. So let me stick to this interview for now. Um, what do you tell someone? And I say this because I, you know, I, I was obese for 20 plus years. I was super insecure and I, I transformed everybody that knows me knows my story, but let me ask you, what do you tell someone that growing up or even now in their 20s, 30s, 40s, et cetera, was not was told growing up, you're not enough, you're chunky, put on a bigger blouse, Jackie, Mikey, whoever you are, right? What do you tell people that how do you how do you how do you get over that at an older age? Yeah. So number one, I started in a little different place, right? I understand how the conscious continuum works from the conscious to the subconscious to the unconscious. So the first thing I do is I come to an agreement with the law of gravity. See, I, I work on someone and say, look, let's work on you exactly where you're supposed to be. You're at the right place at the perfect time. You see the earth is rotating, it's hurling, it's spinning at thousands of miles an hour and yeah. you don't even feel it. You must be here. Now, once you are happy with who you are today, now come with me on a journey to enjoy the consistent every day, persistent without quit, pursuit of your potential, whatever that is, your potential. And let me lower the bar. Let me get things moving for you. Let's not attach your emotions to some big outcome of losing 100 pounds. Let's try to lose a pound in a month. Let's lower the bar and let's just do it through maybe cutting out half of the amount of sweets that you eat or bread that you eat or pasta that you eat or whatever you love, just a tiny little bit. Let's get it moving into what? The law of Goya. You go from the law of gravity to the law of G-O-Y-A. Get off your ass. Get it moving. <laughs> Nothing happens. Every complete scientist, physicist, Einstein himself and on, nothing happens till it moves. Let me get you moving. Then it will aggregate compound. If you can enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential, whatever that is, to get healthier, wealthier, wiser, worthier, happier, whatever it is, then the law of allowance, the law of attraction will take over. See, when we have something, we get moving, and this is where you're at. When I can teach you to appreciate what you have, 
it then creates a bigger, you add value when you appreciate. Now, let me allow you to acknowledge what you have by giving it away. The only way you can acquire the knowledge of what you have is to give it away. So I create a process where one, you're focused in on receiving, not giving, receiving first, then appreciating to expand what you have, and then acknowledgement to give it away, leaving what? A bigger vessel to fill and a bigger vessel to fill and a bigger, see, you will, the more you give, the more you receive, but you got to receive in order to give something. You can't give what you don't have, whether it's happiness, whether it's love, whether it's you know your own self-worth, you got to have that first. So the law of gravity, then the law of Goya, then the law of attraction or allowance. Facts, facts, facts. That's awesome. And that, that perception already in itself, just like anything, as you know, we got to apply it. And if we don't get off of our asses, ain't nothing going to happen. Point. No doubt. That's Thank the number one reason people don't get things done is because they don't do it. <laughs> you, you know what drives me crazy and up a wall? And I, and I have lots of clients, whether it's life, wellness, relationships, and branding that I work with. 90% of them on it, on it, on it. Then you have the few. And I'm not trying to call no one out directly who's watching or listening to this right now. Even if you're not my client, you talk about it too much. You illustrate it in your brain. You exhibit that you're going to do it, but it never comes to fruition, right? What do you tell someone that just yippy yaps about it and just it doesn't? What finally, right? Because I gave an example the other day to someone. I said, listen, what if this was your last day on earth? Let's flip it. What if it was the last seven days and every seventh day, you, you get you get rebirth again. You wouldn't be the same person that you were before, right? You wouldn't. You would be big, bigger, better, stronger. That's me. I still can't get to everybody. What do you tell someone that just keeps on yippy yapping and doesn't do anything? What finally hits someone? Yeah, stop searching. Instead, stop searching for your why. Let's look at what you want first. Let's start somewhere simple. Once I get you to know what you want, then I can find who you can help with what you want and who can help you. Then we can figure out the how, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a multiple things that I do uh, at, in the construct of student of your calendar, the 520 rule, the three no rule, the 25. No, I got 16 different ways and I'm happy to give all of them for free, as you know, to everyone, yeah. including yeah. these five daily practices. But know your what, let's find your who, we'll figure out the how, then it becomes easy to do it now. See, 100% of the things you do now get done. The difference between you and I and everyone else is we get stuff done. It's the only statistic I know to be true other than all short putts don't go in, right? I mean, literally 100% of the things you do now get done, which creates efficiency, effectiveness, and statistical success. When you do something now, takes at minimum half the amount of time, and it's 100% statistically successful. You get it done. So when you know your what, we find your who, who you can help and who can help you. We figure out your how, utilizing and being a student in your calendar and all the other things that I teach people. Then you will know your now and do your now now. Then you can apply your why. You're not in search of that why. And when we're applying our why, we're identifying the ego-based consciousness. We're putting ourselves to a higher frequency and we're rolling through the what, the who, the how, and the now, getting more and more done. The faster we do it, the more we can get done. Done and done. You just, ah, thank you. Let's switch gears a little bit. What is the formula? This is for all my business entrepreneurs, especially in social media. As you understand, and I'm sure you heard the news recently, Facebook just now introduced Facebook Reels. <laughs> okay. We all know that Facebook owns Instagram, et cetera. What do you tell someone? In, the, in, in any space in business, especially in social media, who has awesome products, services with a great social media following, we'll say anywhere from 10K to 500,000, right? That wants to expand their brand and sell more products. Do you suggest Facebook, Instagram, even YouTube ads or no ads at all? Because I went to a seminar not too long ago and I go to seminars all the time. They're saying we're lucky if 0.1 to 0.8% of our audiences are seeing our stuff as they want us to what? Pay to play. Absolutely. And so there's a strategy that uh, Shakespeare created, uh, and not to go back to reading a lot of books. Number one, to thine own self be true. And number two, the whole world is your stage. So instead of worrying about 
the analytics and the diet analytics and the sub analytics and the super analytics, which will change, yep. aggregate in favor. See, when you get things for free, you're the product. And so what I want you to do is shift the paradigm to understand all I'm concerned about is finding my own frequency, building and building and strengthening the frequency, knowing and identify the spectrum of people through the huge size, scope and scale of an enormity of 7.2 billion people, and then clarifying my message because it's not what I say, it's what they hear. Allow the laws that I talked about previously to work in your favor. In other words, only worry about capturing you your true self, authentic frequency, modifying it for all platforms, amplifying it through in-person, on the phone, email, and social and traditional media, and then create a perpetual strategy. Because the one nice thing about social media is it aggregates and compounds upon itself, just like an IUL, just like an annuity, just like an investment. Yeah. It never goes away. So as more people understand and raise their awareness in that 0.7% of the people that are aware of you, mm -hmm. you have enough depth of content in order to facilitate growing. Why? Because the way that audiences grow is through ambassadorship. I told Gary Vaynerchuk when I met him almost five years ago at the Super Bowl and I was helping him with the sports agency. I said, man, all I need is two ambassadors a year. He said, what are you talking about? If I can get two ambassadors, two people that will watch my TV shows, elevator pitch, office hours, two minute drill, all the movies I've done, you know, anything I do, books, podcasts, if I can just get two people to love it, that they tell two people to love it, and I get two people to love it to get two people to love it every year. In 20 years, when I'm 70 years old, Mr. Gary Vaynerchuk, I'll be the most impactful 70-year-old on the planet. Why? Because I'll have 2 million ambassadors getting me 2 million ambassadors, setting me up for when I'm 71 to have 4 million ambassadors, getting me 4 million ambassadors. Shit, by the time I'm 80, I'll have almost the entire world as an ambassador that I can utilize to empower others, to empower others to be happy. Damn. That's some good stuff. Guys, are you taking notes? If you're not, get on it. Glue on it. Um, Dan, that was a great answer. Thank you for that. Look, uh, we both have been on television for Jesus many years. You've done a lot of shows. I've done a lot. And a lot of people ask me this question. I have to ask you, what is your favorite show to date that you have been on starred in that you're just like, it always gives you the, you. I got to tell you, man, the culmination of my entire TV and movie career is coming up on October 15th. Uh, I created my own late night entrepreneur show for Bloomberg Television and Amazon. And uh, it has billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes, and entertainers talking about their spirit of excellence, talking about making money, helping people and having fun. But I'm talking a lineup that you've never even seen on the NBC late night show. I'm talking about Cameron Diaz and Sad Guru, Tillman <laughs> Fertitta and Rob Deerdeck. I'm talking about Apollo Ono and Marshall Falk. And the list goes on and on, four to five unbelievable guests for 12 consecutive weeks, office hours on Bloomberg and Amazon, the best project I've ever done. Why? Because it's going to impact the most people that I, out of any project I've ever done to make more money, help more people and have more fun. Heck to the yes. So this official release is? October 15th. Come and see it. Guys, get on it. Save it right now. People can save it right now, right? Absolutely. On Amazon, they can save it now or DVR Bloomberg. Uh, it's on Friday night. First late night uh, uh, entrepreneur show. Congratulations, man. Seriously. Congratulations. You. you keep building and building. You keep inspiring and inspiring. And that's what I tell people. Just because you reach a level of success in one, eight or even 12 categories, you keep going. Right. You keep Spirit going. Of excellence. God, I have a few more questions. This is so important. Be with your last one, man. We can do this again. We will part two. How do you keep your balance? Meaning, just give me really quick from the moment you wake up to the, you go to bed. How do you maintain the positivity and the calmness while being a badass? Beginning of my day, my tomorrow starts today. 
My tomorrow starts today, 9 p.m. I have an unwinding routine. I don't believe in the man-made construct of time. So my day starts at 9 p.m. by having an unwinding routine. You see, I don't drink before or after nine. I have no negative energy, no alcohol, no drugs, a, a special temperature, a special light. I don't have any negative conversations, any anxious conversations. What I'm doing is putting my mind, my body, and the soul right into a position of recovery and access. See, I believe while you sleep, you get a download. Most people waste the download. They live their life like the myth of Sisyphus. They have a boulder they push all day long to the top of the hill and they let it roll all the way back down for the next day and they feel stuck. Not me. I plateau and grow. When I wake up, at 4 a.m., I meditate and transcend the information from my unwinding routine into a new baseline, a better self, a higher mentality, a higher purpose, and a higher thought pattern. Then I set in my mind where that baseline is so that during the day, when the ego gets in the way, the need to be right, offended, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, guilty, resentful, worried, I just stop. I remind, remember, and recollect where that new baseline is. As I have plateaued and grown, I go back to center, to neutral. And then I roll what? Into that trajectory I talked about earlier. The what? The who? The how? The now? And the why? With my non-negotiables in mind, I have a, a routine every day, but I have an adaptable routine that says when I make my routine, God's going to laugh at me and push me into a better place. So I better know what's most important to me. My number one thing is my health. If you're healthy, you know this better than anyone. You get as many wishes a day as you can. When you're not healthy, you only have one wish. So health is number one. Two, family. A minimum amount of time every day with my own children, my wife, and my mom. Then it comes to time. I study time by being a student in my calendar, be productive, to add value to everything I do, to be accessible, yes. accessible to so many people, utilizing this five minute and 20 minute rule. Five minute phone calls. I have five minute phone calls for anyone on earth. Email me, david at dmelter.com. I give my books for free, ebook, audiobook. I sign books, send them and ship them for free. Just be accessible. And then finally, the lens of gratitude. You got to find and seek the light, the love, and the lessons. You can't not allow life to happen to you. Allow it to happen through you. You are connected to the most powerful source, omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing source. And that source feels just like you feel about your children or your mom feels about you, except for it knows everything and it's all-powerful. Imagine how much faith you can have. So you got to have an unwinding routine, a routine and an adaptable routine, be productive, be accessible, and most importantly, be gracious, be kind to your future self, do good deeds, reach out to me, david at dmelzer.com, books, guides, exercise, everything's for free, I'll give it away, man. You got to empower others to empower others, elevate and celebrate others the same as you do for you, Jason. Thank you so much much you got to give to get you got to give love get love and even if you're not going to expect it back it will come back david Meltzer, thank you so much my friend for giving my world my audiences the opportunity just this little glimpse because guess what for season three you're coming back you're coming back baby from thank me you. to you keep it caliente keep it calientito which means even more and never stop being as amazing as you are. Thank you, David. God bless you, man. You rock. Bless you. Be kind. Thank you, everyone. everybody. You know what to do. Go follow, subscribe, get his books and much more. Have a blessed day. Take care. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer. And don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.